morning, everyone. Welcome again to Sustainability Talks. Today we have Andre and walk you through guys to a new technology in fashion. So Andre, tell us a little bit about you. What is sustainability for you? I'm a mathematician, so I'm quite a logical person. Sustainability means rationality and responsibility for what we're doing. No? It's not declaration. It's not what we want to do, what, what we like. So for me, it is this. But the fashion is, by definition, we know it is emotional. It's quite difficult. No? You say my last five years were dedicated exactly to make fashion, to try to make, to help making fashion sustainable with the technology, okay? I had a startup, which is still active uh, for six years already, which was about mass customization. So it's a technical approach, how to help companies organize their backend to, so, to serve, to be prepared to more sustainable goals. For me, the main uh, belief was made to order. So I'm truly believing this, this, the planet approach, demand-based things, et cetera, et cetera. This is a response more, more or less to my individual personal values responsibility and rationality number against emotion so who is going to uh, win <laughs> uh, it's how to find the balance no between yes. emotions and rationality between uh, consumer engagement and and fashion style that's the most complicated things uh, how's your startup helping the fashion company what we do with this startup company to basically help reducing the gap between design and sales you know how to make it shorter how to help companies by passing to digital workflows uh, to rationality and planning of the collection and retail and technically speaking the approach is called mass customization not Nico, this is a new word mass customization your, your topic is very related also to something that we post lately uh, that is a company called uh, finesse they uh, collect uh, found for five million dollar to predict trend. So they said that in 25 days, they can go from trend to the finished product. Did you ever hear about that? You know, there are different ways to identify trend. For some scenarios, this could be a solution. Sure. No, you listen to the push, you listen to the pull, you try to uh, react as soon as possible and you identify at the end, what is a trend. Eh? Technically speaking, it's possible, surely, but it's not the only way. It is an approach maybe of mixing. So some, somebody is pushing some trends. And then we see the reactions, no? But it's a bit different meaning of trend. It's not the trend which fashion believes, which are trends, no? It's more uh, user-generated reactions, anyway, the waves that come in back, no? And for me, this is a feedback more than a trend. And with this feedback, I believe, again, as with, with what I do, with what my company do, I believe is the best way. So to, to launch something, to see the feedback, and to understand quickly how to adjust. You, company needs to be ready for that. So they, it means the collections are never finished. It's always work in progress. And again, this is not the backend side is, is mass customization. Otherwise you are not able to produce it. You may redesign things, but then how to make, you know, the supply chain ready and a factory ready to produce the things which are changing every day. Not so simple. How do you think digitalization can help sustainability? So sustainability by itself without tools to realize it and to prove it, it's mostly marketing. It's a vision. It's something that you believe you are doing. No? Well, yeah. technology here is called it to make it possible. Digitalization is an enabler. By digitalizing the assets, so the models, materials, whatever, by digitalizing the processes, by digitalizing understanding the data which every process is creating, you have tangible things. No? You can analyze them and then at the end, you are sustainable or not. Facts will tell you. Not just I'm sustainable because I've designed this cool bag which is half no recyclable. So what? No, no. But anyway, <laughs> we know in fashion there are different levels of sustainability. For somebody, just recycling is already enough. I would say we could produce things with zero need to recycle. No, that would be probably the ideal sustainability, but the others may not agree. I don't know. So I don't, I don't pretend on a single vision. Andre, how this data, how this information, this digitalization can help traceability? So the traceability by definition is a proof of being traced something. No, today, what we trace with the traditional approach, we trace QR codes. No, somebody comes, puts a thing and well, some companies even develop blockchain technology or super sophisticated tracing, but tracing of what? Of just a code. 
then the product could be whatever it is, you know? and especially yes. the, the materials, which is the main area of my current company, I call group, which is digitalizing the, the leather business. So leathers, the heights were never analyzed, never digitalized. And if somebody says we're tracing something, you trace the processes, you are, you know, you trace an average thing. You maybe trace something, the process can be verified one day, then company certified, and then you trace it by just trusting. That's it. You trace the paper. Example of leathers, no, they yes. are traded as a wholesale. Nobody ever cared about each particular piece of leather. Yes. You know, every animal is different. Everything is different, but still we live in the stone age. They traded by kilos, by tons, and then put some code somewhere, but nobody ever knows the concrete quality, but then quality of what? Because they apply it on the average by digitalizing. We create an incredibly precise digital twin. Then we have a statistics about every single piece, how it is made, its shape, its distribution of colors, its defects or anomalies, whatever it is. No, we can use it for cutting, no, for nesting, etc. technically, but we can then even use for, for other very interesting scenarios, like really tracking the logistics. Wow. Our technology comes with the level of recommending concrete piece of leather for every cutting task. That about traceability, we had one guest, uh, Massimo Brandelero, from ID Factory, is it your system something similar to that or, or is complementary to that? It's complementary. They trace in modern way, but again, a code. While we scan the piece, we have a DNA of every single piece. One of the scenarios that we introduce also for B2B, you can order and buy. So first of all, find uh, in a stock exactly the piece of leather, which is needed exactly for your operation. Now we have digital passport of every product. And so you can buy five pieces to produce exactly these, these elements. For us, the objective is zero waste. So the goal is not a full automation to eliminate humans and so on, but to make things more optimal. How does the brands are approaching today uh, this topic and uh, digitalization? Only few companies use digitalization in the wise way to follow sustainable objectives. Many companies are doing a lot of great job on digitalization of their processes. The objectives could be two, real transformation. When digitalization allows you new models, like smaller collections, no digital, so this trend prediction, adjustment of collection, or made to order personalization, you know, these complicated disruptive things, which you cannot do without digitalization, of course, no? So you do this to be flexible to introduce yeah. new models. That's one objective and many companies will do work on that. The other objective is really to be sustainable. Who do we need to follow to be on top of trend? I think VF Group and Timberland, what I like about them is that their marketing, what they do and their technical level is perfectly coherent. So I, I, I could not never say that, that that's a bullshit, that's greenwashing. You see what they are doing. They have strategic approach to sustainability. How do you do the automation of the process. They have three main different directions. So three business lines where digitalization is applied to three different parts of, of, the, of the value chain. One is wholesale. So we have a B2B wholesale, digital wholesale platform where the goal is to work with brands, with buyers, with suppliers, bring them online, make them exchanging documents, everything in digital and so on. Now we try to influence a digital B2B process. Now, another second business line is Factory 4.0. It is where we automate, uh, we have robotization no? and uh, advanced automation thanks to digital twins, etc., etc. The footwear and leather goods production part. It, robot is receiving digital twin from the design part. The third direction is digital services. So here we develop exactly the digitalization tools, uh, no, which then are applied to wholesale, to production. So those uh, digital twins, AI, uh, visual quality inspection systems, uh, and things like that. No? So we have three business lines. They are related to different parts of the, of the value chain. And we, we don't believe that uh, a one company needs all of that. No, maybe the leaders, I would say, yes, they must do it. But normal company would say, well, we, we work with the design. Here, there is a factory piece which we want to upgrade. Here we go to B2B, so we need to do it. We want to a uh, white label platform not to deal with our suppliers in a, in a more optimal way and so on and so on. 
it is not automation what we do, it's robotization. Now there is a very big difference. Robots can produce one piece and, and stay like that. Here, mass customization is maximum. You can produce one piece, 10 pieces, 1,000 pieces with the same productivity. What do you think about certification? For me, certification is a too much B2B concept. It's you trust me because you trust somebody who has certified my processes. In B2B environment, it works until we want to believe it, but surely it won't work in B2C environment. The problem is that who is demanding the transparency? The customer. B2B? Yeah, it's the customer. We don't care about this B2B certification. We want to, to, to touch it, to feel it. So bring me the proof. And the only way to bring the proof is to pass to technological approach. I need an app. I need your data. I need, I don't know, scan something and some algorithm tell me that this is coming from there, you know? So certification, you will show me the sign. Well, maybe I believe because I know that company is serious, but it's not enough. But the other point of view that even certification today can be improved. Certification, old style was based on I come, I verify, and then you trust me. Today, what we discussed before, data. Data is constantly coming. So you can recertify, re-verify in real time. Technically, we can do it. So why to rely only on that certification, which is trust me because you trust the guy who, who verified me? I, I don't see why. And I believe the certification companies will jump into digital transformation themselves. Now it makes sense. What's the big limit that the fashion industry has today? They're not, not only the limit, the problem of the fashion is that it is trying to upload their ideas to the market. So is this season it collections approach? We must do new things. We always must convince people to watch only new things. Just last year, it was great. Now it jump, not, you throw it away and so on and so on. This approach, I believe, is broken. So we can digitalize anything. Uh, we can improve the processes. But at the end, if we continue going to design new collections all the time, threw away all that you had in your wardrobe and take the new one just because it's a new trend. Sustainability is a completely different thing by definition from this push approach. A company is produced, but fashion is business. It's not about atelier. No, today fashion is not making nothing for me. They're making for themselves. No, so they use great designers, they promote things. This is how it works. The numbers, no, the volumes of fashion are so high that it's impossible to invert it totally. That the real problem is to find this model. There is a logical model, how to work with the market. No, it's not about digitalized or non-digitalized process being more quick or more flexible, but to understand what is new, what to present, no, what is the reason for people to buy new things. It was Thanks. very, very educational for us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.